understand these red flags about the steroid use, here's a quick look at the medications that are being used to treat COVID patients. My colleague Sneha Murdani explains. So what are the medications then? Dexamethasone is used. What is dexamethasone? It is a glucocorticoid medication, a steroid used to treat rheumatic problems, a number of skin diseases, severe allergies, asthma, chronic obstructive lung disease, croup, brain swelling, eye pain following eye surgery and along with antibiotics and tuberculosis. Medications like remdesivir and tocilizumab and convalescent plasma also is explored when the patient is suffering from moderate illness. Let's tell you what these drugs are. Remdesivir is a drug made to treat Ebola. It's a broad spectrum antiviral medication. Tocilizumab is also known as atlizumab is an immunosuppressive drug mainly for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. All right, Dr. Pro Professor Dr. Vincent Rajkumar from the Mayo Clinic, Dr. Pratit Sandani, welcome to the show. Thank you for taking the Morning. time out. And Dr. Rajkumar, I know it's uh, very late for you right there in the U.S., but thanks for doing this for us. Uh, Dr. Rajkumar, you know, I was going through my Twitter uh, feed and doom scrolling, and I came across that tweet of yours that really stood out, that prompted me to really do the show and my multiple conversations with Dr. Pratit Sandani also about the non-judicious use of steroids. Now, with black, black fungus cases or the mucormycosis cases on the rise in India. Uh, Dr. Vincent, you made a plea on Twitter to reduce the steroid use. Are steroids, in your opinion, not being used judicially, uh, judiciously at the moment in India? And when is it necessary? What is the right time? What is the duration? So thanks so much for having me. I think the first thing that uh, we need to explain to viewers and um, make it very clear is that steroids are not antiviral drugs. They don't kill the coronavirus. Hmm. They are anti-inflammatory and they are immunosuppressive. They have a role to play because we have randomized trials that show that when you use it properly, it can save lives. Hmm. But it's needed only for a very small number of patients. Patients who, uh, after the first week of illness, they they have hypoxia, low oxygen concentrations in the blood. That is the time to use it. And if you use it too early, you will inhibit uh, the immune system trying to fight the virus and the virus will divide and cause other problems. If you use it at a high dose, higher than recommended, hmm. or if you use it for too long, it's recommended only for five days, hmm. then you're going to have additional secondary complications, bacterial infections, fungal infections. So I call it a double-edged sword. You have to use it judiciously. And from all the reports that I'm hearing, I mean, my tweet, um, I had overwhelming number of direct messages, quote, retweets, replies. But that's nothing compared to the number of patients who contacted us directly because we've, we've had friends and family and physicians we keep in touch with, the media. Steroid use is rampant. Hmm. And not just rampant, it's high doses, prolonged duration of therapy. And uh, no wonder you're dealing with drug-resistant secondary bacterial infections, drug-resistant candida infections, and most importantly, this mucormycosis, uh, otherwise called as the black fungus. Right, uh, Dr. Vincent Rajkumar, that is a matter of huge concern. Now, I want to come to Dr. Pratit Sandani, who is actually treating these critical care patients in India. Dr. Sandani, as Dr. Rajkumar just explains, that the judicious use of steroids is a must, and in the U.S., they do follow a certain level of protocol when it comes to administering these steroids as well. What is going wrong in India? I mean, outside of a few top doctors who are judiciously using, like you, uh, there are many doctors who are administering these steroids in the early stages of COVID. So dexamethasone has become almost synonymous to paracetamol when it comes to uh, treating COVID patients. And how harmful is that? Yes, Chetty, I do agree that there are a lot of uh, doctors who are prescribing dexamethasone or prednisolone or methylprednisolone or any other form of steroid that's available in the market very early in the disease. Hmm. Now, as Dr. Winston just said, they are actually immunosuppressive. We've been talking during this whole pandemic of COVID, how do you improve our immunity? How, what do we do to improve our immunity? That's left aside. We can't do something to beat our immunity down. So if you use steroids early, injudiciously, you're gonna harm yourself by causing more infection risk and beating your immunity. 
So steroids use must be done only in the inflammatory phase of the illness. That means if you're on oxygen, if your saturation is dropping, and that usually happens after the first five to seven days, you should not be using steroids early. If you use steroids early, actually the virus is going to multiply much more later during the course of the illness. And we have this data now from the MERS, from the SARS-CoV-1, from the respiratory syncytial virus in the past, all our respiratory infections like influenza, the moment they've used steroids early in the disease or even later in those illnesses, you've actually had a worsening outcome. However, as far as COVID is concerned, the recovery trial has shown us that if you use steroids judiciously at the correct time for the correct patient and for the right duration, that means more than no more than seven to 10 days, Steroids certainly are life-saving. It's not a drug like an antacid or a paracetamol that you use for someone who comes to you in the clinic on the first day or fifth day. Right. I just want to also now understand and just to establish the lay of the land and why we're doing this particular sto show. Uh, Dr. Vincent Rajkumar, the cases of black fungus or mucor mycosis are on the rise and through many conversations with many doctors, I've understood that that could be fatal. There are facial disfigurations. Somebody is having to remove their eyes. Uh, there is a whole host of uh, uh, multiple doctors that are required to even treat a black fungus cases, uh, a patient. Uh, if you could explain black fungus, mycosis, and the fact that this is probably a result of the non-judicious use of steroids in our country. So, you know, um, I, I think there are multiple factors that are responsible for mycosis. Um, one of which is diabetes. Diabetes is more prevalent in India and yeah. high blood sugars, uncontrolled diabetes, even without steroids, is a big risk factor. When you give steroids, blood sugars go up. Hmm. That's, you hmm. can make someone diabetic hmm. by high doses of hmm. steroids. So if you are already diabetic and then you add steroids, then you have a double whammy hmm. uh, and that increases the risk. The third problem is many of our patients uh, in India are getting antibiotics, which you know, again, are not necessary for COVID, hmm. whether it's azithromycin or doxycycline. Hmm. These are broad spectrum antibiotics that disrupt the normal flora of the uh, mm. of the body so what happens is then fungus uh, like black fungus or candida can grow so you have these three factors the antibiotic use the steroids the high blood sugars from diabetes and and particularly if they're not controlled well <laughs> you, you you have a immunosuppressed patient that is just susceptible uh, to something like this happening i am not sure what the other factors are uh, you know, if there is um, something else that we need to be concerned about, particularly the oxygen. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm just hearing reports of mucor and amphoters and B shortages, which is just stunning to me because, you know, that's not something we have encountered uh, in the U.S. with so many thousands. As you know, we have 33 million COVID patients in the U.S. diagnosed. Uh, I, I'm just puzzled about about that problem. And also, if you could give us a little bit of perspective, remember, we, you and I were talking about the cancer research that you're doing. And when you yes. administer steroids, it's actually used to kill those particular cancer cells and link it to now what it does to when you administer, administer it non-judiciously on COVID patients, Dr. Vincent. Yes. You know, <clears throat> I made a, I, I'm a cancer researcher and uh, one of my contributions to hmm. cancer research is finding out that high doses of steroids harms patients. Hmm. So I treat a cancer called multiple myeloma and it hmm. is the cancer of plasma cells. Hmm. Now plasma cells are the cells that make antibodies and help us fight infection. Hmm. Now, whether you get a vaccine or a viral infection, hmm. the, the cell, the antibodies are the ones that, that come up. Hmm. Now we use steroids to kill plasma cells. So that's how powerful these drugs are in immunosuppressing hmm. someone. And so what we found in the studies that I did, I'm talking about like, you know, almost 20 years ago, hmm. is that high doses of steroids cause higher risk of death, higher risk of blood clots, higher risk of infections. And we now, in, even in the cancer hmm. situation for multiple myeloma, have now hmm. routinely started using only low-dose steroids. The discovery trial, uh, the recovery <coughs> trial 
used, uh, I think, six milligrams of dexamethasone. Hmm. Sometimes if dexamethasone is in shortage, they use Wysolone or prednisolone hmm. or solumedrol. And there are equivalent doses. Hmm. But what the doses I'm seeing sometimes are five, ten times higher some, and for much longer duration. And that's where the problems happen. Absolutely. Dr. Pratit Sandani, what is happening in India at the moment? Uh, uh, how bad would you think d uh, black fungus is? Could you speak a little bit on the suppression of immunity and other fatal secondary infections due to steroid misuse? Well, I'll give you an example. Um, I was seeing one of the governments, and I do not want to name, they were giving out these packets of paracetamol and zinc and uh, vitamin C and everything to, to people who have mild doses of steroids. And I was shocked to find out that there was dexamethasone in that because without medical supervision you can't just give out steroids it's just going to make the condition worse so that's true uh, giving steroids is definitely harmful although steroids are physiological you require steroids normally and everyone produces steroids and it's a life-saving drug in the correct circumstance as he spoke about the recovery trial I'd also like to tell our viewers the equivalent doses of dexamethasone to the other steroids so six milligrams of dexamethasone is equal to 40 milligrams of prednisolone, is equal to 150 milligrams, 160 milligrams of hydrocortisone, is equal to about 32 milligrams of methyl prednisolone. Now, this equivalence is very, very important. <clears throat> you can't use a drug five times its recommended uh, course or you're going to cause serious infections, bacterial and fungus. You ask me which are the fungal infections that are common post immunosuppression. Commonest is Candida. You, candida is a normal fungus and very commonly found in the oral cavity in the mouth. It can be found anywhere else. On the skin, that's a very other common site. You have non-Candida infections, which are common again in the skin, in the blood, in the urine. You have Aspergillosis, which is a common uh, fungus, which is actually present everywhere, but you don't uh, take it inside or it doesn't infect you because your immune system is robust. And that predominantly affects the lungs. You have mucormycosis, you have pneumocystis carinae or PCP, which is also a fungus, and you have mycetoma. These are the common, common fungi that we see in immunosuppressed And patients. are these all drug now, resistant, Dr. Sandani? Many of them. So if you see aspergillus, is actually there's a variant called drug resistant aspergillus. That's how common it is. Now, let me tell you why mucor is more common in diabetics. And, if, you know, India is like the capital of diabetes. And something that's really stunning is that the rest of the world also has an increased risk of diabetes and they're more diabetics. But the incidence of mucor is low in them. And one of the corollaries is there's a, a, a massive use of a drug called uh, uh, statins. These are cholesterol lowering yeah. drugs. And it's found that they actually inhibit the uh, growth of mucor. Also, mucor or rhizo has mm -hmm. a enzyme and it's called ketone reductase, which is very prevalent in sugary, sweet medium or in diabetic patients. So the moment you have diabetes, which is uncontrolled, you have an acidic environment, you have a dry atmosphere, mucor mycosis is very common, seen in diabetics, patients with malignancies, seen with patients who are in immunosuppressive therapy, seen in patients with lung transplant or any other solid transplant, more hematological malignancies, yeah. also seen in patients with burns, etc., etc. So it. this is very, very common. Right. So, Dr. Sabhani, then how many weeks of steroids for moderate COVID? And what is the protocol for comorbid patients? Because from what I'm understanding from both of you is that the non-judicious use can actually be fatal. Let me not mince my words here. So I would recommend a maximum of 10 days of steroids at the equivalent doses that I've said. No more than that. See, we use steroids in patients who've got bacterial infections who are in a state of shock because of sepsis. But patients usually with COVID-19 don't have this kind of shock where you require prolonged use. So it's just to get the inflammatory response down and a maximum of 10 days. And it's very clear patients who are in the inflammatory response phase of COVID-19 and who require oxygen are the only candidates where steroids should be used. Dr. Vincent, so many SOS calls that we end up getting as well. Most of these patients are the ones who we understand from the receiving doctors of the ECMO treatment or the ICU beds where they're receiving these patients. Going on to tell us that, uh, you know, these are the patients who, uh, and, and we're helping just patients out when, you know, people reach out to us or whatever. And many of my other friends are also doing that. Uh, they just say that this patient could have been saved 
if this particular steroid was not given for this particular period of time and they go to these receiving hospitals after the damage is already done so after the damage is already done what is your advice to mucormycosis patients family how treatable it is uh, is there any kind of light at the end of the tunnel you know the, it's, it's very difficult to treat so you, you prevention is the best step for cure and i think as uh, uh, you know we, we have to make it clear not only to patients and the general public but also to physicians listen the first week the virus is dividing we don't have good antivirals <clears throat> so <throat> all we can do is paracetamol and try to control uh, you know patients hydration and keep them home the second week when there is lung involvement the reason we give steroids is we think that the body is trying to fight the infection and it's acting a little overboard the immune system is responding a little too much and that's causing lung damage therefore we use steroids just temporarily 5 days is what they used in the recovery trial maybe 7 10 days maximum and then you stop because at that point all you're doing is to tone down the immune system so that there's not much lung damage if you continue it longer and you end up with a drug resistant bacterial infection or a drug resistant candida or worse this mucor then it's very very difficult mucor requires surgical excision it requires amphotericin b uh, which is a antifungal drug which has its own list of side effects and so you don't want to get into those circumstances it's you can treat it but it's going to be very difficult dr samdani if you could explain the side effects of these steroids when it comes to tocilizumab dexamethasone and you see so many of these uh, pleas coming out saying that we need this this drug is not available we have to make it happen right now but if you could also explain the side effects of the non judicious use of these particular life saving steroids when it comes to drug resistant mucor drug resistant candida drug resistant bacteria and the muscle weakness and high blood sugar that usually follows so what are the commonest side effect of steroids now when i say this it doesn't mean that a patient who's got steroids will get them but there's a higher chance he'll get them hmm. one is infection as we've discussed over the last 20 minutes risk of infection bacterial fungus very very high second is you can get super added protozoal infections like amoebic infections in the colon because all the gut is completely suppressed and there's a risk of getting that infection you have neuropsychiatric problems like psychosis which is very very common when you use steroids for a longer period of time you of course have increased risk of getting diabetes blood pressure prolonged use and when i say prolonged it doesn't mean 10 days and 15 days but if you're on steroids for a very long period your bones can become weak you can get osteoporosis you can get eye problems with steroids you have endocrinological problems like sugars as i said and local side effects if you take oral steroids you can get gi upsets like gastritis ulcers and bleeding skin thin the skin becomes papery and thin that's another common side effect so steroids have a lot of side effects what so, about the interleukin 6 inhibitor sorry you asked me about no, tocilizumab no no no, 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 no no so that that covers that i guess uh, tocilizumab is also a type of a steroid if i'm not mistaken you can correct me if i'm wrong right it's, there it's it's an interleukin 6 inhibitor so okay. it again beats the immune system yes all uh, right uh, uh, so dr samdani what i wanted to understand and you know put it out there is that steroid is not a villain Uh, so this is not a show that deals with telling you the steroids are villains and do not take it i also want you to explain to our viewers on a winding note and i'm going to come to dr rajkumar also on this that they are not villains it just warning the doctors on following certain protocol and the plan they need to follow when it comes to the judicious use because somewhere what i'm picking up from all of you is that it is not covid that is turning out to be fatal it is the non judicious use of these medications that's turning out to be fatal Okay so steroids are naturally produced in the body they have a physiological role so the physical physiological <laughs> role is a response to stress so they have a stress response whenever you're under stress st- the steroids from the body are released at a higher dose they have an immune response they help your immunity but excessive will beat your immunity they're in, they're required for protein catabolism they're required for carbohydrate metabolism uh they are required for electrolyte balance and all they also required for behavioral changes so those are the physiological roles but the side effects as we said are all this we've spoken about and i want to tell one thing that's very very important you know we spoke about steroids we spoke about prolonged steroids in judicious use but in the icus as i said 10 minutes ago that this fungus the rhizopus or the mucor mycosis actually is prevalent in dry air So whenever you use oxygen 
whether it's high flow, nasal cannula, any other form of oxygen in the hospital or ICU, you must make sure that the oxygen is actually dis as you know, it's humidified with distilled water. And yeah. distilled water humidification is very, very important because moment there's dryness. The other thing that I tell my ICU patients is yes. to actually use a saline douche in the nose twice a day so that the nasal passage remains moist. Absolutely. And Dr. Uh, Vincent Rajkumar, uh, is that the last uh, uh, advice that you'd like to give out to our viewers, to the doctors who are watching this broadcast as well? One, on the uh, uh, steroid usage, telling them that it is not really COVID that may just end up killing you, but it is the non-judicious use of steroid and the hygiene protocol that needs to be followed so that you don't fall prey to mucormycosis. So, you know, I, I, I want to be clear here, though. Steroids are life-saving. You know, if somebody is hypoxic and you give it at the right dose, right duration, it saves lives, no question. And there, that's what we found in the recovery trial. So these are very important medicines. They are one of the best medicines we have to treat COVID when patients get hypoxic. Mm. So when patients get hypoxic, do not hesitate to use it. Use it for the right duration, right dose you will save lives. I don't know how many extra lives are being lost because of steroids uh, on top of COVID, but I won't want to blame everything. But one thing you want to keep in mind is, if you take 100 people who get COVID, hmm. who have symptoms, the mortality rate overall symptomatic COVID is only about 2%. However, when the healthcare system is overwhelmed, whether it be New York or New Delhi, we've seen then the mortality rate goes to 10, 20%, because Patients need oxygen, patients need care, patients need to be monitored very carefully, and an overwhelmed healthcare system is not able to do that. Steroids that are used indiscriminately add to that. Yeah. You're having a third factor now. You have COVID, your overwhelmed healthcare system, and then you have the antibiotics that are not yeah. necessary and the steroids that are in inappropriate doses or duration or yeah. time. It combines together to give you this outcome which is much worse than COVID right. itself. Absolutely. I'm completely out of time at the moment. In fact, I've gone over. Uh, but, you know, I thank you very much, Dr. Vincent Rajkumar and Dr. Pratit Samdani. This is a very important show in public interest on the non-judicious use of steroid when, at a time when we're seeing overwhelm healthcare systems in our country, delayed treatments to add to it non-judicious use of steroids can be a recipe for disaster and hence you've heard it from the top doctors right here on what the judicious use of steroids should be i thank you very much for joining us guiding our thank viewers you. guiding other doctors who are watching as well on that note it's a wrap for me chaitin aruna keep watching india today and just a reminder Mask on before you move on. Social media platforms have implicated dietary supplements in the treatment and prevention of coronavirus disease. During this pandemic, when information quickly evolves in the presence of contradicting messages and information, doctors are now concerned over.